most acts of perversity are, are, are not pure. They seek other goals. Um, thank you. I'd like to thank the organizers for having me here, and thank you all for being here. Um, I want to talk about perverse actions. And my favorite example of a perverse action is from St. Augustine's Confessions, written over 1,600 years ago. And this is the story of his youthful descent into sin and his subsequent conversion to Christianity. And book two of the Confessions has a great beginning. He writes, I propose now to set down my past wickedness and the carnal corruption of my soul. So you expect sex. <laughs> and, but to the disappointment of readers over, over the centuries, the sin he spends the most time talking about is this. He and a couple of friends broke into an orchard and stole some pears. This fascinated Augustine. His sexual sins, he understood. He was tempted by desire, but he couldn't figure out why he did this. He wrote, it was not the pears that my unhappy soul desired. I had plenty of my own, and I only picked those so I might steal. For no sooner than I picked them, I threw them away and tasted nothing in them but my own sin, which I relished and enjoyed. And he wrote, I had no motivation for wickedness except wickedness itself. It was foul, and I loved it. <laughs> and so I became, there's a lot of examples from religion and literature and so on, but I wanted to get real, I'm a psychologist, I want to get real world examples. So I started what I called a perversity project, where I went online and I asked people to send me stories about actions that were perverse. And I defined them as something you choose to do that you know is wrong, morally or otherwise, at least because it's wrong. Uh, like breaking a rule for the sake of breaking it or doing something stupid for the sake of doing something stupid. So one of the first responses I got was this. Flirted with a woman's boyfriend knowing fully well he liked me. I knew I could steal him if I wanted, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to feel uncomfortable whenever three of us were in the same room. <laughs> Causing people pain is wrong, but that's exactly why I did it. This is also the plot of the Dolly Parton song, Jolene. Um, here's another one. Ice skating on a pond, dark, unspot, unfrozen spot, 30 yards out. Instead of avoiding it, I skate towards it, knowing but wondering, knowing but wondering, and splash. <laughs> now, these perverse acts are destructive, and that they cause harm to others, cause harm to, to, uh, to yourself. And the sort of modern avatar of destructive perversity is the Joker from the Dark Knight films. Um, uh, Batman's butler, uh, uh, Alfred, describes the Joker by saying, some men can't be bullied, they can't be bargained with, they can't be reasoned with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. And psychologists develop the scale to see how much you're like the Joker. And they call it the need for chaos scale. And the need for chaos scale includes questions like these. You ask how much you agree with things like, I think society should be burned to the ground. I need chaos around me, it's too boring if nothing's going on. Sometimes I just feel like destroying beautiful things. And, um, and some small proportion of population, usually men, usually young, usually on the political extremes, accept these premises. But not all perverse acts are destructive in the same way. Some I find kind of clever and kind of funny. So here's another response I got. On one occasion in my early 20s, I was out with a friend. He decided to get himself an ice cream, and before he had a chance to try it, I stuck my finger in it. I played it off as a joke, but really I had a sudden thought, man, it would be fucked up if I just jammed my finger into his ice cream. Or this one. When I was in a professional choir as a child, at every concert I felt the desire to sing a few notes very incorrectly on purpose. To this day, I don't completely understand why. Or this one, which is the sweetest and mildest example of a perverse act. Sometimes I walk on the grass instead of the path just because it's wrong. Now, when we get a sense of what perverse acts are, we have to distinguish it from other things. My friend Jesse Baring wrote a wonderful book called Perv about sexual deviancy. And while some sexual acts could be perverse and some perverse acts could be sexual, there's no essential connection between the two. Psychologists like me study when people get it wrong, when we have judgments, misjudgments of reasoning, or weaknesses of will. But this isn't perverse either. These are cases where the person wants to do good, but then messes it up in some way. A perverse act is when you want to do bad. 
And a philosopher, David Sussman, has a nice way of putting it. He writes, perverse acts are those actions undertaken when our normal desire for the good, perhaps a moral good or maybe just a narrow good of self-interest, is reversed. A nice fictional example is Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. A more classic example is Satan. So John Milton, describing Satan, has him utter the following words, evil be thou my good. That is, there's an inversion. Just as a normal person seeks out the good, Satan reverses it and seeks out evil. Now, some people think that this sort of thing exists, that there's pure perversity, pure badness, pure irrationality for its own sake. I'm a little bit more skeptical. And here I agree with my friend Sergio Tannenbaum, a, fellow, a philosopher at University of Toronto. So Sergio writes, if someone insists that Satan's motivation is really just the pursuit of bad as such, aren't we tempted to ask, what's the good of it? What's the good of being bad? Aren't we tempted to look for a deeper motive? And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to explore deeper motives for perverse acts. I'm going to argue that when an agent, a person, seeks out the bad, they're actually seeking out the bad for some other purpose, some other good thing that gets satisfied by seeking out the bad. Maybe they know, they know what it is, maybe they don't. It could be conscious, unconscious. But I want to argue that, for the most part, most acts of perversity are, are, are not pure. They seek other goals. So, my first case, I want to give you four theories of why this could happen. My first theory brings us back to the confessions. So, Augustine was in the company of friends. And earlier on, he says, when he tells the story the first time, he says, that's not why I did it. But later on in the book, he changes his mind a bit. And he writes, I would not have done it by myself. My satisfaction did not lie in the pairs. It lay in the crime itself committed in league with a gang of sinners. A lot of the sort of crazy things we do, such as eating incredibly spicy foods or various sort of masochistic acts, are done to show off, show off our resilience, our religious devotion, how tough we are, to show off in front of friends. And um, you can see this in some famously perverse acts. So Marcel Duchamp, many, uh, over 100 years ago, there was an open art competition in New York where they said you could submit any art you want, competition is open, so he sent them a urinal. And then they sent it back, and they said, we didn't mean anything, we only meant art. He said, this is art. And this work, The Fountain, became one of the pivotal artworks of, the, of modern times and heralded the beginning of modern art. More recently, Banksy had an auction in Sotheby where his, his, his work, Girl with a Balloon, was put on a frame. And the moment the gavel went down for the highest bid, a machine, machine hidden in the frame grinded it up halfway to the shock of people around. And Banksy wrote, Later on, the urge to destroy is also a creative urge. But I actually, I think Banksy just knew what turned out to be true, that this would make Banksy even more rich and more famous. The shredded work now sells for 10 times more the original work. So here the agent does bad in order to get something good, status. The second case is what you would call jackrabbit perversity. It's cases where we act perversely because we want to outsmart and defeat another individual. So jackrabbits, according to various claims, when they're chased by a predator, they move unpredictably. They move unpredictably because if there was any logic to how they move back and forth, the predator could figure it out and it would be lunch. Well, unpredictability is not perversity. If I ask you to choose a number between 1 and 100, I can't predict what you're going to choose, but that's not perverse. But they are related. And they're related because the rational is usually predictable. Suppose I have to figure out, suppose we're in some sort of battle, some competition, a war, some sort of conflict. If I assume you're a rational being and you will do the rational action, then I could predict what you're going to do. I just say, what's the smart thing to do? He'll do it. Um, suppose you wanted to murder me on the way to work, on my way to work. This is a map, this is that red front, is where I work. This is uh, uh, where I live. Um, and you wanted to murder me on the way, a perfectly sensible thing to do is go to Google Maps, find the best path to work, and lie in wait and murder me there. What I would do instead is perversely go in random patterns, backtrack, take funny routes, take the wrong route. If I do that, 
I will outsmart somebody who's seeking to outsmart me. And here, the, the perversity serves the role of being unpredictable. But there's a deeper point here. This is actually mentioned by Rory Sutherland, um, the, the ad man, who, who writes, irrational people are much more powerful than rational people because their threats are much more convincing. He gives an example of the debate between uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. I don't want to get into politics here, but Sutherland says something which I think is true, which is there are certain advantages that Trump has as a negotiator because he is not tethered by rationality. If, if, if Clinton makes a threat, people will say, is this a reasonable threat? If it's not reasonable, she won't carry it out. Trump can make outlandish threats, but you never know. And I, I find this over and over again in fiction. The same scene is, is played out in these two books. Um, I'll talk about the Dennis Lehane one, because it strikes me as kind of powerful and a bit moving, where Lehane describes our protagonist, a decent man, and he's approached by a psychopathic mobster. And the psychopathic mobster says, you must do this terrible act for me. You basically must kill an innocent person for me. If you don't, I'll kill your father. And so our character is thinking, and then the mobster says, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you could commit suicide. You could kill yourself. But I'll tell you, if you do that, I'll kill your father anyway. And our character thinks, but that's crazy. What would be the point? And then he realizes, I'm dealing with a perverse psychopath. He would do it anyway. And so his threat, which would be bizarre from a rational agent, gains force. Sutherland goes on, talking about driverless cars and AI. If driverless cars stop reliably whenever a pedestrian appears in front of them, pedestrian crossings will be unnecessary, and jaywalkers will be able to watch, march into the road, forcing the driverless cars to stop suddenly. To prevent this, driverless cars may have to learn to be angry and to occasionally maliciously fail to stop in time and strike the pedestrian in the shins. And this idea of emotions like anger, emotion like losing your temper, as perversely irrational acts that could serve an agent's end, is actually commonplace in theories of why emotions have evolved. If I evolve to lose my temper, this makes, me a credible, makes my threats credible, even if they are not entirely reasonable. And this gives me an edge. So here, the perverse act is used, it gains, serves the purpose of giving you an advantage in interpersonal conflicts. A third theory, which is kind of my favorite, involves autonomy. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.